Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Well, it is Russia's turn to lay out the Russian peace formula. As the Ukrainians, <laughs> represented by the Ukrainian Zelensky, laid out theirs. So we have here Medvedev, and Medvedev, Medvedev is a former prime minister and former president of the Russian Federation. He comes and tells us, uh, how Russia sees uh, this uh, war ending and what are Russia's expectations as the other ones brought forth their peace formula. Very interesting. Um, they give, uh, Medvedev gives us a little flavor extra from what uh, we knew about the peace formula. And it remains unchanged. Let's make it uh, clear. So let's go to this article coming from Ukrainska Pravda. It is from Thursday, March 14th, 2024. Medvedev say, lays out so-called Russian peace formula. Okay, this is so-called, but theirs is the real peace formula. Well, let's see what the Russians say. I mean, in any argument, you want to hear what the other side says, right? If you want to go and dispense justice or, you know, make an, uh, have an opinion on something or an assessment, you have to look at both sides. So, okay, we know what these guys want. Now, let's see what the Russians want unless we know what they want and with no need to listen to them. This is the mentality of the Western media. We tell you. Don't talk to them. No, 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 no. We're going to tell you what you need to understand of what we tell you they think or they say. No, I would like to read it myself. Nevertheless, here I have this uh, formula be, uh, being given to us by Ukrainska Pravda and understandably enough it's called uh, so-called. Deputy Chairman of the Russian Security Council Dmitry Medvedev has laid out the details, oh thank you, of the so-called Russian peace formula which would require the capitulation of Ukraine. Uh, and I'm quoting, payment of all due compensations to Russia. Hmm. And, and I'm quoting, adoption of an act on the reunification of the former territories of Ukraine with the Russian Federation in return for Russia ending hostilities. So this is basically what the other guy says too, said too. Didn't they say that uh, they want Russia to capitulate? They want to receive money for reconstruction and, you know, and then this uh, things to re reunify, reunify with Ukraine. So this is the so-called, the other one is called the, the. They will not stop. They will not stop until the Ukraine will, not Ukraine, the West will capitulate, fully capitulate. I have no doubt if they can, if the Russians can, this is the goal. Now, how will they achieve it? Through a complete um, domination or, and elimination of the Ukrainian forces. Or if these guys are coming to their senses, which I don't think because they have no reason to, they're, they're not they who are dying, is those guys who are dying with an idiot in charge of them, which is this guy's is idiot. So let's read further. Medvedev stated that to achieve the so-called, and I'm quoting, consensus with the international community, Ukraine must declare, and I'm quoting, complete and unconditional surrender. Got it? conduct demilitarization, dismiss all constitutional authorities and immediately hold elections for a temporary parliament. So, yeah, basically they do what the Americans did to Japan and to uh, Germany after the Second World War. They said, you guys write the constitution, but we are going to be the ones who are going to look over and give it to you back when we feel that you're not under our thumb enough. So demilitarization, that means no more military, like the Germans after the First World War, remember? And uh, dismiss all constitutional authorities. That means we're going to rewrite you the little uh, <coughs> constitution here. So constitution election in the, in the parliament that's going to be supervised and then complete and unconditional. That means we do whatever we want to you. Well, never been so clearly uh, exposed by uh, Medvedev or the, by the Russians. He also claimed that Western countries recognize the, and I'm quoting, 
Kiev political regime as a Nazi junta and that there were no need to conduct a forced denazification program encompassing all authorities under United Nations supervision. Was a need. There was a need to conduct a forced denazification. Denazification for the Russians is this. Uh, don't support, I was about to say Mazepa. Uh, that's his name. Uh, Al Capone? No. Um, Bandera and uh, the people like him destroy the monuments that were erected because for the Poles and for the Russians, uh, Bandera is a Nazi collaborator and um, so on. They, they try to keep it down. It means don't hate us. Well, that's hard. That's hard, but they're going to try by force, by uh, propaganda, media. But in order to do that, you have to control it. In addition, the Russian official believes, oh, official, now he's an official, huh? <laughs> believes that Ukraine must pay compensation to Russia, including reimbursing relatives of Russian soldiers and to, and I'm quoting, official, like, officially recognize that the entire territory of Ukraine belongs to the Russian Federation. If, I'm not going to say when, if the Russians um, succeed in destroying the Western will and uh, will eventually conquer or take over Ukraine, I think all these things will be achieved by the Russians uh, without asking the Ukrainians. We're going to find some uh, eager collaborators that will uh, have to do it like in any other country. Uh, remember uh, in France, the Vichy government and the guys who went in uh, exile in uh, London with uh, General de Gaulle. Again, they had to cooperate. Then you had, for instance, the Japanese, they went and signed the uh, unconditional surrender, capitulation. The Germans did the same thing. So you will always find people that will say, well, the chance for me, either to uh, be spared from being killed or to spare my nation, or, you know, maybe these guys are going to use me in the new government, therefore I can help. Many reasons. They've did, done it before. I'm talking about anyone in the in the history, if you read the history, has done it. You put your own people or people who are willing to do what you say. And they can do it because they're weasels. They can do it because they think they're going to protect their families, their interests and uh, their country, their nation. And they will do it. They will find the right people who say, yes, uh, we're going to do it. Quote, this is, and I'm quoting, <laughs> this is the soft, soft parade, like uh, the Doors uh, album. This is the soft Russian peace formula. <laughs> What's the harsh one? <laughs> After all, this is a compromise position, isn't it? I believe that following it, we can come to a friendly consensus with the international community, including the Anglo-Saxon world. Okay, it's clear now, right? International community, it's separate from the Anglo-Saxon community and conduct productive summits con counting on the understanding of our close friends, namely our Western fuck off partners again. Jesus Christ. Anyway, so basically, this is the soft thing. What would be the harsh thing? Well, uh, obviously, things could be um, pushed to an extreme, which could be nuclear weapons, could be attacked. If the guys in the West don't, uh, you know, understand that there are limits, they can be bombed themselves. It can be, you know, the idiocracy could increase to nuclear war and uh, things could get out of control. The West doesn't want nuclear war. The West doesn't want to be scratched. Remember, remember, like a bully. The bully wants your lunchbox without being scratched or punched in the nose or caught by the balls or, I don't know, poked in the nose or eye or something like this. No, they want to take it with psychological warfare. They can beat you, but they don't want any more effort or any little damage. If that is to happen, they will do it. The problem here is Russia will not only poke you in the eye, it was going to you up. And yeah, you're going to fuck them up too. The problem is you don't want that. Why? Do you think the Westerners, the elites, really want to uh, fight to the end for what? I know a group that is behind these elites that really want to do that. Eventually, we have a messianic uh, prophecy there, right? And remember, these guys that are fighting the Russians, they fight because they were kicked out of Russia. They have a personal, idiotic, 
I don't want to say messianic, but religious argument behind their idiotic push. Remember, Putin kicked them out. They were riding high on Soviet Union, in Soviet Union. And that's one of the grievances of all these new lands. All right, my friends, here it is. Um, this is a soft offer. It's a, he says, a compromise position. That means they have some other aces right here in the sleeve, but are not ready to use it, unless these guys are not cooperating. Uh, and about the international community. Remember when the, and you're going to see this in the, in the future, when uh, the Western media tells you about the international community, whatever the international community they want uh, it to be. Three countries, five countries, one country, 20 countries, 40 countries. And that's it. That's their international community. There's never 193 countries as an international community. Do you think they care about what Zimbabwe says? Unless Zimbabwe promotes and accepts uh, and supports the position of the guys that use this international community. But here Medvedev made the position international community and the Anglo-Saxon world. Not Anglo-Saxon Latin world, uh, world, including French. So French is out, as we knew. Uh, Anglo-Saxon mean, meaning United States of America using Great Britain and the other weasels like Australia with the government, not people. Yeah, the government are formed of people, but hey, they're in the hands of the same groups. You know, the, you know what I mean. So here is my friends. He's nice, actually, Medvedev. Con unconditional surrender. Japan, Germany, you're doing great. So I'm expecting to follow the same uh, pattern with un uh, uh, unconditional surrender. That means if Ukraine will uh, surrender unconditionally, they will have the outcome of Germany and Japan free, democratic, strong, independent countries. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.